Good evening and uh, warm welcome. Thank you for joining us for our midweek devotion. Um, oh, it's very hot. Um, and we can I just encourage you to stay hydrated. Um, now, the devotion, as I said, comes from Judges chapter 1, the entire ch chapter 6, the entire chapter. Uh, we are going to look at, uh, at it from this angle, trusting God's presence and power. Uh, but before I jump into the chapter, I just want to give you a little bit of context. Uh, the book of Judges is a book that is filled with a cycle of rebellion, a cycle uh, which includes rebellion, um, retribution from God when the children of Israel rebel. And then after retribution, we see them um, crying out to the Lord, that is repentance. And after repentance, restoration comes and this is a cycle that continues throughout the book and so they do something that is evil in the eyes of the lord and the lord comes and 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 and, uh, and retribute them or gives them a something that causes them to think uh, a second time and when they realize the pain and suffering that they're going through they call out to the lord and the lord uh, provides a deliverer and they are delivered and the cycle there's peace considerably when the judge is still uh, in power or still leading them but after that they go again back into that cycle which we pointed out in some of the sermons uh, previously that you know we are like them in some way that we sin when things don't work out too well we cry out to the lord and then the lord restores us and the cycle continues again which is one thing as christians we need to be working on our own salvation with fear and trembling to try and stay on track and follow jesus closely that we do not stray and so today i just want to pick some few points as we have looked into chapter 3, seeing the children of Jesus are going through a difficult time and they are rescued. In chapter 4, we see them being victorious through Deborah and Barak. And in chapter 5, they celebrate God's goodness uh, in a song. And in chapter 6, we see that after the 40 years of peace in chapter which ends, which concludes chapter 5, in chapter 6, we see that the children of Israel again do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. In fact, it reads, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midnights. So again, that cycle starts again. Uh, they are in rebellion, they are in sin, uh, and, and therefore God brings judgment on them. And the judgment is suffering through oppression through the Midnights. And these Midnights were so ruthless, as is ex explained in that verse, uh, in the verse that follows, that the children of Israel had to build their houses on mountains and, and curves to hide from the midnights, midnights. And so we see here, one key point in the chapter is God's presence in times of fear. Where do we see this? As they are hiding, we hear of a man called Gideon. And Gideon um, is, um, is uh, threshing um, grain. But instead of threshing grain on a, on a threshing floor, he is doing it in a vine press. And it is said that he did that because of fear. He was afraid that the Midnights would come and plunder because they were plunderers. They would wait until Israel had gone through the farming season. When the harvest is ripe, they would come and plunder. And he says they would take from animals to grain and they would leave nothing, no living thing. So they would have to start over, over again. And so Gideon in fear, he uses a vine press to to hide the the produce from the midnight so we see here there is fear but god's presence is always with us we even in difficult times how do we see that because god then visits um gideon and we are told the salutation uh that comes to gideon uh, from god from the lord from god is that he greets him as a mighty warrior or a, the man of valor uh, is the king james version translated and he is even uh, surprised how god would call him that name because he didn't think that he was that kind of a person nor was the vine press a place where god you know in this time of fear uh, in the vine press to hide from the midnights would be a place to see the presence of the Lord. But the presence of the Lord is there right with us, even in the midst of our fears. And so then we also see God's call to courage. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, calling him to lead Israel against the Midians, the Midianites. We see that from verses 11 to 12. And when he does so, Gideon has got many questions. How can that be? 
you know god says you know i am with you and he says how is that true you know we have heard history about how you were with our fathers walked with them through from egypt to into the promised land but all those were stories maybe they were fables and you know but i don't see your presence we don't see your presence we you have abandoned us he even says but god says you need to be courageous i am with you it's a call to courage because as it you know it is uncertain it doesn't seem like it is going to work and we need to still be obedient to our call even when it doesn't make sense. He calls us to courage and faith, to believe in him even when we feel inadequate. So for Gideon, he also felt very inadequate that he even went, he even doubted, you know, and questioned God. So the third key point we see is Gideon's doubts and fears. He questioned God's presence and power. Are you really with us? We have heard stories about you. Are you even that powerful? If you are powerful, then show me a sign. And we see that verses 13 to 24. He wanted a sign to prove that God will do what he said he would do. But he was speaking to the creator. And we see the iron of it is when he then offered his, um, the food to, to, to the angel of the Lord and put it on a rock. And then the, the, the Lord touches the food with a staff and fire came from the rock and consumed it and he realizes oh i'm in the presence of the lord what did he do he thinks you would die there's proof right there that i am here i'm the lord but he doubted all that we often doubt god's ability to work in our lives isn't it god calls us and we say me really we see moses doing this very thing when he is called to the burning bush and he is told to go and deliver the children of israel from Egypt, what does he say? I am unable to speak. How am I going to get to the Pharaoh and tell him that, you know, God has sent me to come and deliver them? You know, Lord, don't forget, I ran from Egypt, from the Pharaoh. Because what did I do? I killed an Egyptian. I killed an Egyptian. I spent 40 years running away from the same king, living in the desert and heading Jethro's uh, uh, ship. How can I be going back to that place? Again, you know, I am a man who cannot speak. Oh, of course, God said, I hear you. I hear your fears and I'll answer them. And he gave him Aaron to go and speak on his behalf. But what's interesting, though, is this. When they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and at the end of Moses' life, he preaches or speaks. And his speech does not show someone who was inadequate. Because the entire book of Deuteronomy is Moses speaking to the Israelites, preaching the longest sermon he has ever preached or any, has anyone preached. He he, he was just speaking and speaking and didn't call Aaron to do it on his behalf or someone else. Why? Because mostly it is our doubts and fears. It is not that we are incapable. Even when God calls us to do things, it's often that when we say we are unable, it just betrays our doubts, it betrays our fears. But God is with us even when we are afraid. And so the other point we see is God's patience and provisions. He's very patient because when Gideon asked the questions, are you really there? Are you really present? Are you that powerful? How can you show me? And he asked for signs. And God answered every single one of his questions. He was patient with Gideon's doubts. You will be patient with your doubts. So if you have questions to ask God, please ask him. Just be polite. And when we do ask him in sincerity, because he knows our hearts, he will answer our questions because he is patient and he will provide the reassurance that is needed. He provides it in Judges from 17, verse 17 to verse 24 of this same chapter. He is patient with our doubts, providing what we need for us to trust in him. And so, is take homes or things to take away with as application. One, we need to recognize God's presence. In times of fear or uncertainty, remember God is there with you. And Psalm 23 is a good example in verse 4. Secondly, we need to respond to God's call. When God calls you to action, trust his power and provision. Again, if you're uncertain, ask him. And he will assure you, he will give you the reassurance that you need for you to be obedient. Sometimes it's the plunge of faith, just jump and say, I will do it, Lord. I know you are here with me. Just give me the courage and the power to do this. And you will do it. We need to overcome our doubts. That's where the courage for us to pursue this call is needed. 
when God calls us, we have to overcome our fears. We bring our doubts to God, seeking reassurance and guidance. And the Lord is sure to answer those questions because he is calling us and it's part of him molding us uh, into the role. So when Gideon steps out now to do, after being reassured, he's unstoppable. And we will see, as Pastor Gary promised, come on Sunday next uh, this week, and he will go into the next chapter, we'll go into the next chapter, and, see, and another chapter, and we'll see how God used this man who was full of fear so much that he had to hide in a vine press when threshing grain. This man who had a lot of questions, doubting uh, and being afraid and doubting, and God provided the reassurance, and he overcame his doubts because he brought everything to the Lord. And then he went out with the reassurance he did mighty acts for the Lord. And that call, when God called and said, mighty men of valor, it came true when Gideon stepped out, overcoming his doubts and trusting, which is the last point, uh, the last um, uh, point, trust, trusting God's sovereignty. Rest in God's control. When God has called you, do not go in your own strength. Even when circumstances seem overwhelming, we need to trust God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty says, wherever you lead, I will go. Whether it's going into the valley or going on, uh, to the mountaintop, I will go. And the strength to go there is a strength that comes from you. But also that your presence is always with me, whether I'm in the valley or I'm on the mountaintop. Like I always say, it is better to be with the Lord in the valley than to be with the devil on the mountaintop. So accepting God's sovereignty says, I will be with you, you will be with me. Wherever I go, you will be with me. I don't care what that place is. Even if it is going to hell, if you're going with me, I'll go. But we know that you, the Lord doesn't go to hell. Therefore, we will be with him in suffering. Let me use that. In suffering, but also even in our joyful times success failures the lord is with us and therefore we need to trust his sovereignty and i want to end with the questions for reflection which we asked uh, in the in the sermon on sunday which i'm also going to use here today for you to reflect what fears or doubts hold you back from trusting god as a church here at northside we are calling people to come and serve we say the church leaders, especially the elders, their work is to equip the saints for the work of service. Are you willing to stand up in faith, even in the midst of your fears, to say, God, use me? What are those fears that you need to overcome and confront that you have that are stopping you from trusting God and serve him here at Northside and also in the kingdom of God? Sometimes it might be in your own life, with your own family, at your workplace. What are the fears that are stopping you from fulfilling God's mandate for you, God's call for you? Because without knowing them, you ne will never confront them. Without knowing them, you cannot go with them before the Lord to get their reassurance for you to stand up. We are looking for leaders in the church, people who will lead as deacons, as, as, as elders, people who will lead in the various different portfolios of, of, of ministries, as ministry heads. We are looking for people to just even serve as, um, as volunteers. Oh, I don't like to use that word because it's obedience to God's call. Because when we talk of volunteerism, many people would say, well, it's I, I don't want to volunteer. But we don't have even an option not to volunteer because God has called each one of us as we are members of one body, each having a gift that they have been given by God to serve in the house of God. We need to use those. So it's not a matter of an if, but a when. When are you going to be obedient to God and do something? But what are those fears? When you know them, then you can go before the Lord with them and he will reassure you. How can you apply Gideon's experience to your own life? We have read about this man, fearful, afraid, hiding in a vine press, threshing grain, then the Lord calls him a man of valor, mighty warrior. And he wonders, am I a mighty warrior? But then God assures him. He asks questions and God answers him. And he became a mighty warrior for the Lord. How can you apply that experience of Gideon's to your life? And lastly, what areas of your life need God's presence and power? Be honest, it is your life. And I need to be honest with mine. In what areas of life do I need God's presence? Not that he is not present, but my reassurance that he is indeed present with me. Because I think, sometimes we think he comes and goes. The Lord is with us always. 
but sometimes we don't feel it. And so in what areas of life do I feel I need to be reassured of his presence with me and his power that so that I can actually come out and be obedient to the call that he has given to me. I just want you to take time to think about that this week. Think about it and do something about it. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence in times of fear and uncertainty. Help me to trust. Help us to trust your power and provision. Forgive our doubts and fears and give us courage to respond to your call. May your sovereignty guide us and may we rest in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me uh, for this devotion. Uh, I hope it will impact your life. You will do something about it. Until we meet again, bye-bye for now.